The intended audience for this video is design. In this video, we will be giving a high-level overview on how to transition code from C Sharp into C++, covering topics such as the Unreal Engine C++ framework, interfaces, delegates, coroutines, singletons. Along the way, we will be showing code examples to cover these topics. At the end of this video, you should have a good starting point to port Unity C Sharp code to C++ in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine provides its own C++ framework. Although standard C++ code can be written, it is highly advisable to use Unreal Engine's types and systems instead. One of the main parts of this framework is the reflection system a robust system powering many features of the engine. This system is actually required to expose data and functionality to the editor. For full details, refer to the official Reflection System technical documentation linked to in this video's description. Classes, properties, methods, structs, etc. can be marked by special macros that expose them to the Reflection System. Furthermore, these macros can take a number of specifiers that modify their behavior. To show a practical example, we have created a custom class that can trigger a custom interaction event on a target actor. The idea is to allow designers to select which actor will receive the interaction event. In Unreal Engine, on begin play, the equivalent to start in Unity, if the target actor is set, we will trigger a call. However, as we can see when we begin playing, the property is not set. To expose the property, we need to add an editable specifier to the target actor property. Now, it appears in the editor and we can set the reference. There are many specifiers that grant us a lot of control over many parts of the engine. Looking at some of the possibilities, we can enforce that options for the property must inherit from a specific class. When creating a U-class or F-struct type, you also need to add the generated body macro inside the struct declaration. This is a macro used by Unreal Header Tool to auto-generate necessary boilerplate code. One last comment about the reflection system is that it grants the ability to inspect code at runtime. We can easily verify the class of an actor, for example. Going back to our example, there is one important piece of syntax that we should cover. Any non-primitive types that are exposed to the reflection system need to have a specific prefix. These are actually not just a syntax preference, but are enforced by the Unreal header tool during compilation. We have already seen an example of calling an interface method. Here is the declaration of the interface used in the previous example. It is important to note that, unlike C-sharp, C++ does not support interfaces at a language level. It works as a result of inheritance. However, Unreal Engine provides a custom interface syntax that works with the reflection system. To check if an object implements an interface, we call the implements method. To call an interface method, we can cast the object to the desired interface and just call the method. One exception to this is when calling blueprint implementable event or blueprint native event methods. In these cases, you need to call a static method passing the callee object as first argument. Finally, let's see how a class implements an interface. This is our actor class that can receive interactions from the class A used in the example before. Besides the increased flexibility and architecture gained from using interfaces, by allowing us to use abstractions instead of concrete implementations, there is also an important benefit from using interfaces instead of casting to target types. 
When we cast to a particular type in Blueprints, we end up loading that entire class in memory if the target is a Blueprint class as well. Using interfaces improves the memory footprint of calling the method. Inheritance in C++ allows creation of interface-like hierarchy with native classes and virtual functions. When not using U interfaces, these abstracted classes remain acceptable only through C++ code. A delegate, in essence, is a function pointer with the added benefit of being able to bind raw functions, methods, and blueprint functions. Delegates support unicast and multicast handlers. Dynamic delegates are specialized delegates that allow blueprint functions as handlers. Delegates need to be declared first. Also note that the number of arguments a delegate can have is also determined by the macro declaration. To add the delegate to a class, create an instance of the delegate just like any other class variable. When class B receives an interaction event, it fires a delegate. This is the equivalent of just calling the delegate method in Unity. To showcase how we would bind logic to the delegate, let's have our class A instance be notified when on my delegate is broadcasted. When it runs begin play, it will bind a handler method to the delegate on the class B instance. Our class A can react to this delegate. Before moving on to the next topic, it is important to mention how a delegate is declared, bound to, unbound from, and executed differs based on their type. Unreal Engine does not support coroutines. The most common way to transition a code from C Sharp that uses coroutines is to break a function apart with async calls. In this example, we want to trigger the delegate after a specified delay. In C Sharp, this could be achieved by returning wait for seconds in a coroutine. What we can do in Unreal Engine is use a timer to call the remaining logic. The timer manager completion can be bound in different ways. For example, we can either bind it to a class method or to a static method. We can also keep track of the timer handle to control the async behavior by pausing or canceling the timer. It is fairly common practice in Unity to use the singleton pattern to handle game management. In Unreal Engine, we could use subsystems to address the functionality brought by singletons in C Sharp when ensuring a deterministic lifetime. Subsystems are readily accessible objects that only get one instance whose lifetimes are automatically managed by the engine. In addition to subsystems, Unreal Engine provides a number of framework objects with specific lifetimes. You can create subclasses of these objects to give you more control over their functionality. Using subsystems allow us better separation of concerns when multiple subsystem classes tied to the same lifetime are each responsible for a specific behavior. However, sometimes you might need to override specific logic or use data from a framework object. Consider how our class B can add a record of each interaction to a class C subsystem. Walking through a simple gameplay scenario, we were able to visualize how many concepts from C Sharp are either directly applicable to or easily implemented in Unreal Engine C++. We looked at the reflection system, some of its features, and how to write code that leverages it. We have shown some concepts in Unity such as interfaces and delegates that are easily translated to Unreal Engine C++. We have also touched upon singletons and coroutines and how similar ideas can be used in Unreal Engine. We merely scratched the surface of each of these topics. There is a great number of resources for each one linked to in this video's description. Finally, it is worth mentioning that Unreal Engine offers access and editability to engine source code. This means that you have the entire engine code base as a reference point. It is important to be thoughtful about making engine changes 
as they can impact maintenance efforts and supportability.